New York and on the new Hot 97 app, Ebro in the Morning. On Hot 97. Yeah. Ebro in the Morning, beautiful Laura Stouse. Wow, not wrestling, Star Trek, classic. Shout out to Rosenberg. In the building. And shout out to DJ Cassidy in the building. Yeah. Speaking of classic, a, a classic individual, a vintage individual. What kind of jacket is this? Hello, you're everyone. What's going on? Uh, first of all, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for yeah, having pleasant me. Pleasant trees, blah, 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 blah. Um, <laughs> this is a custom military jacket. Mm -hmm. It was made in Scotland. Okay. I found this incredible place in Scotland that makes these um, authentic military jackets. With all the materials, wool, trimmings. Are you Scottish? I'm not. Oh. But something led me to Scotland on a trip. Okay. I was there for two days, and I found this incredible place. And I couldn't get these jackets made in the U.S. I had tried for a long time, and I found this incredible place. And I basically designed them now on the phone with these guys, and they send me these incredible So jackets. this is a part of the DJ Cassidy brand now, the military jacket. Yeah, military jacket's been a part of the DJ Cassidy brand. I didn't brand, know this. But not as much a part as, as this. The hat. As the boater hat. Boater now, hat. That's the what it's boater called. boater hat. Yeah. Not boner. Boater. I said boater. Boater, not oh, boner. Right. Yeah. Got boater it. hat. Um, but that's a, this is a winterized version. Normally it's straw. This is felt. Yeah, so the classic boater is straw. Thank you for noticing. Very few people notice the difference. I'm actually I'm a very impressed. Not a boater, but a noticer. <laughs> I'm actually very impressed. So the, the, um, the standard traditional boater is made of straw. Okay. And I started wearing that about 10 years ago. I'm not quite sure how a... Um, a um, classic gondolier slash um, old school election um, slash southern dandy hat became my signature. That is strange. You're not from the South. You're from New York City. And I'm not from Venice. You're not from Venice. And what was the third? And I never worked at a campaign in the 1920s. Never. But um, I started wearing fedoras a little over 10 years ago and just wanted um, um, a hat that was unique and literally put it on and it just kind of stuck and it became my calling card to the point that I had to make one that I could wear um, throughout the whole year. So I came up with a way to make a felt version of the straw boater. So you made this hat? Yeah, custom, not me. I wasn't you had actually it sculpting it yeah, on yeah, the yeah. block, but yeah, yes, you I had, you it, had made. it made. Um, yeah. Let's not act. I want to make sure that the audience who may or may not know you knows who you are. You are a DJ here in New York City. You've done some of the hottest parties. The Diddy parties in the Hamptons, the the hot party, this, the Michael Jackson celebrations, the, I mean, I'm trying to, you put out records, you've done so many things in and around New York City and taking that around the world. Am I describing the DJ Cassidy movement right? I think movement so. Right? Um, I've been DJing since I'm 10 years old, um, and uh, it's taken me around the world I could have never imagined. Uh, when I was 17, I met, I met Puffy, who you mentioned, and um, the night I met him, I was playing... Uh, the soul music of the late 70s and early 80s. You know, Michael, Stevie, Prince, etc. Which you grew up on here in New York City listening to BLS and KISS FM. Of course. You know, I was a hip-hop kid. That was my first love. And I asked my parents for two turntables and a mixer for my birthday when I turned 10, got the greatest gift of my life. And hip-hop led me backwards. It led me to all that music. I wanted to learn all the music that contributed to the sound. But I think that's all of us, right? Sound. All of us. That's what hip hop did for us, right? Yeah, Rosenberg, you learn the you learn the samples. Right. You exactly. want to learn the records that made the records that you love. Exactly. And I fell in love with the soul music of the late seventies and early eighties. And yeah. I was playing it that night, and Puff saw me, and he couldn't believe that someone so young. Um, was there playing all these classic records and he said to call him the next day and a week later I was playing his party for the Grammys and I played every party for him since and that led to J-Lo and to Jay and Beyonce and Oprah um, and then um, I was the first DJ to ever play a presidential inauguration and the first DJ to ever play at the White House of course not this one the last one well people you know I think also because you're um, a white kid you know what I mean? People don't think you're as studied as you are. They assume that you're just kind of like some privileged kid who hasn't done the work, but you've actually done the work. Yeah, you know, and back then it wasn't work. Um, you know, studying um, that music and what created hip-hop was, I was going to say my hobby, but it was my everything. My hobby, my passion, my fun, my social life. I had no social life then because of it. And then... It gave me a social life. It made me cool. Um, and I got all my identity from that. I mean, all my weekends were shopping for vinyl and allowing 
each record cover to lead me to the next. And that's how I learned. I mean, I really looked up to Grandmaster Flash. He was my idol. Mm. He was like this larger than life superhero. I was Superstar. never into sports. So seeing Flash, seeing Bambada, Cool Herc with the speakers coming out of the yeah, convertible, yeah. that was like Spider-Man, Superman, and Michael <laughs> Jordan to me. Yeah. And they were playing all kinds of music, and that inspired me. So I wanted to learn about that kind of music, and it made me want to be an encyclopedia of music. And so I strove um, to be the DJ um, that could play all music for all people all over the world. That was... Uh, that was my mission. What strove kind of music? the word. Oh, I'm sorry, Laura. Is it is it strived or strove? I think it's strove. I'll go with strove. I've I never actually <laughs> I actually questioned myself as I, I said it. I still question. Is know. it strived or strove? I don't know. Does anyone I think know? Strove. Maybe, go maybe with strove. Right. What about striven? Definitely. Not. It's definitely not striven. striven. <laughs> Curious. What kind of music did your your parents play in the house? Um, my mom didn't have anything particular that she played on the regular, but my dad was. Uh, the Superfly soundtrack, Bob Marley, yeah. um, Led Zeppelin. Um, but more than anything, I got a passion for music for my dad. And what my parents did for me the most, when people ask me, I always say is, is, you know, I grew up in an era when parents were scared of hip hop. And they didn't want to let kids go to concerts. And um, That's still today, too, by the way. Is it? It is. As popular as hip hop is... So a lot of I mean the content's crazy. Like there's no way around it. Even if you grew up in hip hop, right? You get to a point. I'm I've been in this my whole life. I have a daughter. The radio's on. You're like, what are we listening to yeah. right now? Like it's just not for children. Yeah, but the violence that shows might not be the same. Nah, Back then there was there was a myth of there was a myth Overly of violence, violence, but there's shows. still violence at shows. Okay. I mean, it's so, not, not happening. So, yeah, fair enough. But it's not everywhere either. Yeah. Right. I mean, look, man, there's violence at schools. Yeah. And I'm sure we'll, I saw your comment on my post around the Senate. I mean, there's, there's violence in America. Like, there's <laughs> exactly. violence at churches. Like, I mean, what are we talking about? Yeah. So, But anyway, um, um, if I wanted to go to a show, they brought me to a show. And, um, and they bought me turntables for my birthday, and that completely changed my life. That's dope, man. Well, um, did they know you were going to start wearing pearls on your... They didn't know I was going to start wearing pearls. Now, whose bracelets. pearls are these? Are these heirloom? Okay, this so, is handed down to you? No, I actually just got these this weekend. Okay. Um, I was in Vegas right. to do the opening of Catch. Like the Catch, like the restaurant. Yeah, so Catch is a hotspot restaurant here in New York and L.A., and they opened one in Vegas for Halloween through a big party. George Clooney was there. And you were dressed as Pee Wee Herman. I was dressed as Pee Wee Herman. Well and done. <laughs> I could see you pulling off Pee Wee. Whoa. Thank you. You got to see it. So I've always hated it's Halloween. It's on Pee Wee's story. <laughs> Pee Wee pulls off Pee Wee too. That's exactly. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to take you it wanna, as, you a, wanna, as a compliment I, it, was, it didn't need to be repeated. I thought it was but clear. The interesting but the thing, the interesting thing is I've, I've always hated Halloween and never wanted to dress up. And I well, you dress it, up for a living, bro. You, so I mean, there you go. There I didn't want to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And especially like when I go on stage to rock a party, I want to look like me in my normal costume. <laughs> I want to have my hat on. Yeah. So this Halloween was the first time I DJed without my boater on and without glasses on in 10 years. And I was scared I was going to feel so uncool and so naked. So I got this Pee Wee Herman gray suit, white penny loafers, red bow tie. I got a makeup artist did my face with the rosy cheeks and the lips. And, and, and I was walking down the lobby um, um, through the hotel, and something inspired me to start sauntering through the casino floor like Pee Wee. And everyone just started screaming, and I was like, oh, this is not, this is not that bad. I kind of like this. And I just kind of fell into the character, and... Honestly, I got a reaction like I could have never imagined. But the crazy thing is, people were like, "Oh my God, that's so perfect for you!" And, and I'm that's, like, that's "And I'm weird. like, why is that perfect for me?" <laughs> and everyone's like, "Yo, you Pee Wee!" And I'm like, "What do you mean, me and Pee Wee?" And I'm still trying. Is it like short pants and like I think tight it's, suits? I think it's the I fact that Pee Wee in in the show, not outside the show, not the real person that got in caught the in movie. theaters in, or in the movie Big yeah. Adventure, whatever. We're talking about the movie and the TV show. Yeah. Remember, P what was it, Pee-wee's Playhouse? Of course, Pee-wee's Playhouse. Playhouse. The movie yeah, was a little more adult, but, no? Or they were both creepy. No, nah, no, it's not they the creepy part. They were meant for kids. Yeah, yeah, it's not the creepy part. It's kind of like the quirky, 
kind of his look. Nerd he, he, he very the look. Well, the high, yeah, you wear the high waters. You wear the hat. Like it kind of it goes like together. He had a very complete look. And then also from a physical standpoint, though, you are a dark haired, thin. See, like tall I always guy. thought, like if I dressed as like Run DMC or. Or, or like Michael Jackson, someone would be like, oh, that's perfect. But it was like Pee Wee Herman, where people uh, were like, oh, that's no. perfect. What do you mean? Well, How tall are you? Well, because Pee Wee Herman's white, bro. That's it. Yeah, but that's not everything. No, I know, but I'm just saying, that's why they said, <laughs> ah, it's perfect. Yeah. I don't well, know. I could have dressed that up as a lot of white people that yeah, wouldn't and they have probably would have said, Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> <I'm telling laughs> you that. I could have dressed as yeah, any white any person white and they would have said that's you're, perfect. You're 5'11? Yeah. Paul Rubin's 5'10. Okay. Dark hair. I'm actually 5'10 and a half. See, I lied. Exact so, same so, height. So, See? So exact same height. The exact same height, same color hair, thin, very cultivated look. Like, that does make sense. When you said it, I was like, oh, that's a good fit. And then, of course, I did the Pee Wee dance. Well, of course. To tequila. Now, let, me, let me ask you something. <laughs> and everyone screamed tequila, and I was doing the thing. You got to see it. I'm I was tequila. actually <laughs> thought you wore the, the, the hat all the time for the reason I wear a hat. I thought it was because of your hairline. What is this? But your hairline, this is the Pee Wee dance. Oh, yeah, but that's the hip hop Pee Wee dance. Yeah, so. Yeah, I was saying back tequila. Get busy, People at this party wouldn't have known this. I would have liked to have done this. Get busy, y'all. <laughs> so now I feel like it's Christmas and it's Flex and Red Alert up here, right? Classic. Yeah. Oh, um, but yeah, no, I thought it was you were hiding your hairline. Your hairline's no. immaculate. No, I have a good hairline. My hairline's in shambles. I thought no, I, I thought you were wearing a hat because your hairline was fucked up this no, whole time. We're watching your video of US Pee Wee Herman. Yeah, it's it's pretty actually good. pretty good. It's, it's, pretty, it? it's, it's pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually pretty impressed with myself. <laughs> no, really man. Good. I can't believe you don't see yourself, man. It's really good. I mean, <laughs> when I watch that, I see myself. And you have to go back and watch me sauntering through the <laughs> through the casino floor. It's pretty good, man. You weren't sauntering. You were galloping. <laughs> it was actually fun. It's actually making me start now to think of what, what I could do next, next Halloween to yeah, possibly yeah, even year. compete with. Whatever white skinny guys people are going to Yeah, go. I guess I have <laughs> to <laughs> think of a white, white skinny characters. <laughs> I need to start thinking. Yo, and Nas is Michael Jackson. Psh, Nas's mic was pretty... It was kind of bizarre. It's like Nas on stage with me performing It Ain't Hard to Tell in a Michael Jackson <laughs> Grammy 1983 is... jacket and me as Pee Wee Herman on the mic, like That's hyping tight. him up. And it just That's like tight. when you watch it, it looks like kind of just like <laughs> freaky. It's like Pee Wee Herman rapping Life's a Bitch like with Nas nah, in nah. a Grammy sequin jacket. And but it was it's all for fun and games. So, look, you got a new record that's about to drop with Justine Sky, yes. Brooklyn's own. Yes, called Coolin' by My Side. And how you keep dropping records. Is there an album ever going to happen? Like, are you just going to keep putting out? Look, I like the singles thing. It's very club. Modern. It's very, well, it's kind of throwback to where people used to just do the 12-inch A and B true. side. You know what I mean? And like, it's actually both. This is an example of something that can be old school and modern yeah. at the very same time. It actually is, if you think about it. Yes. Um, so never an album, just these singles, which I like. Well, when I... When I started making my own records um, about four years ago, um, I had this vision um, to, to kind of capture the sound of the dance music of the late 70s and early 80s, which you know about, right? Mm -hmm. And I got all these legendary musicians from that era to play on the records, like the members of Earth, Wind & Fire, Nia Rogers, and all these guys who played on Off the Wall. And... Thriller. and um, and I wanted to unite them um, with all the artists that I love today. Um, and, at, um, and at first, I was going to make an album and just put out a single, shoot a video, album. Um, but, you know, my DJ career is nonstop. It's 365 days a year. And I wanted to continuously put out records for me to play. I wanted the music to keep up with the pace of my live career. And the way I've released the music is really like I would have if the songs were on an album. If you listen to all my singles in order, from the first to the new one, um, you hear a progression. Progression of mood, progression of emotion, progression of spirit. Um, and I'm going to continue to do that. Will I ever put them all on one thing with another five new songs? Possibly. But I'm kind of enjoying this new... Um, 
kind of never ending continuous flow of new music. I like it for a DJ actually. I, I prefer I think, you know, the mixtape thing for a DJ, obviously we live in an era where people call playlists mixtapes, which is fine, whatever. Um, but I do like as a DJ that you just drop records that are for the parties that you are playing in. And over a long period of time, you end up having five and six records that you get to play as you perform. Sure. I think um, the one kind of negative connotation that the singles game has is that the singles don't connect. And I think in my case... I think case, that's industry talk, though. Like, if it's if people like it, they like it. I th Oh, and I didn't even mean connect in that way. I meant connect in that they don't actually go together. Oh, and once again, that's industry. That they talk. don't connect to each other. Man, um, people put out 30 song albums now, bro. Like, I don't even know how that connects for some people. Yeah, but some would argue they don't. That doesn't connect either. Yeah. I've never been the type who likes albums that have a little bit of this and a little bit of that. You know, sometimes you listen to artists and they're like, yo, my new album has a little bit of this and a little I bit know, of that for everyone. Mean. I don't like that. I always liked albums with one producer. One thought, um, one idea, one vibe. One idea. And I think very few albums that had multiple producers really won, but there's obvious examples. Um, um, Illmatic, my favorite hip-hop album of all time, had, what, four or five producers, mm -hmm. but they all connected. And um, all the producers on that album were of a similar, um, I don't want to say sound, but of a similar era, um, era and a similar... General vibe. Body of inspiration. Yeah. New York. Yeah. Hip hop. It was Q Tip, Pete Rock, Premier, Large Professor, and LES. Yeah. How many is that? Five. Five on nine songs. Who produced that intro? I don't know. Great question. Great question. Salam Remy wasn't part of that? No. That was later. Yeah, Salam came later. Don't ask for these jackets. They're custom. He's the only one that could get them. Facts. Will the hats ever be available? You don't want anybody to copy that style either, so they can't get the felt boater hat. No, we'll see. The hats might be available at some time. Oh. I don't mind people taking anything, you know? Inspiration is inspiration. It is. DJ Cassie, give it up one time, hey, man. Love you, bro. Thank Love you. Love you, too. Thank yes, you for man. having me.